Now, video game conventions bring together top gamers and developers in the industry, but they also draw military recruiters. They see gamers as an asset when it comes to operating unmanned drones overseas. But can the disconnect between video games and wartime casualties be problematic? And what does that mean for drones as the future of warfare? These are questions that are addressed in the recent documentary, Drones. There's always been a connection between the world of war and the world of entertainment. The military has invested in creating video games that they're using as recruiting tools. War is an unbelievably profitable business. The drones have been terrifically effective. They've taken out a lot of the Al-Qaeda leadership. It's cheap. It doesn't involve putting troops on the ground. The United States is violating one of the most fundamental rights of all, the right to life. Now we're joined now by the film's director, Tonye Hessenche. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I, I want to specifically just talk about what we were looking at there, which is this kind of combination of entertainment and, uh, and, and uh, military tools that obviously do have very fatal consequences, right? Military weapons. In, in doing this film, tell us what you found about how involved the military is in this kind of gaming world and in, uh, and in using this to their benefit. Well, it's clear that uh, gamers today have a lot of important skills that can be used in, in this new kind of warfare. And uh, we look at the very close relationship between the entertainment industry and the military, where, uh, you know, uh, the military has found out what interface works best, what kind of joystick works best. And to me personally, it's uh, very frightening when you go from a mentality where you get points per kill to all of a sudden killing real people on the other side of the world. So uh, in the United States, video games have been used for uh, recruiting for a long time uh, with games like America's Army, uh, which was meant to be a recruiting uh, tool. Uh, and now it has actually become one of the most popular online games in the world and is played by 9 million people. Yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible if you think of how popular some of these games are. And I've seen, uh, you know, things like this firsthand, too, when you have these kind of army recruitment centers, and they will have almost virtual reality type of games that you can have uh, kids playing, and it is a lot of the time mostly kids who are there. What specifically do, um, what specifically do they tell people when they are trying to recruit them, and specifically someone who might be a drone pilot, about the skills that will be needed or what it's going to be like? Well, I don't think necessarily that, um, I think, I mean, we're really still trying to figure out what makes a perfect drone pilot. And the, the U.S. Air Force is having a really hard time finding drone pilots and keeping them in the Air Force. Uh, because one big difference between a video game and being a drone pilot is that in, in, um, in the, the work as a drone pilot, it can be extremely boring. I mean, you sometimes observe one house or one person for months at a time with nothing really going on. So uh, they are still trying to figure out, you know, what makes the, the best drone pilot. Uh, for us in this production, we have been visiting uh, several gaming conventions where we see, you know, how war is uh, pretty much sold as a game and that's been very uh, chilling. Well, tell us more about that too. What have you? What did you see specifically at some of the conventions? Well, it's more you know uh, where kids come together to have a good time uh, with their friends, and all of a sudden uh, the military is uh, is present, um, doing their games and showing you know new uh, weapons and how to operate drones and um, uh, yeah whatnot. So it's uh, it's a big uh, contrast that brings up uh, a lot of to me, very, very important ethical issues that uh, we need to take seriously. And now, of course, we see not only questions rising about the use of drone, drone strikes internationally, what this means legally, uh, you know, ethically, morally, and we talk about the victims, the civilian victims often, of drone strikes in some of the countries, but we also now see kind of a, a new focus on the drone pilots and the effect that this work has on them themselves, whether you can have PTSD from, uh, you know, from shooting from thousands of miles away and operating a drone. 
What did you find when you spoke to a number of drone pilots for this film? Well, we've been uh, following uh, several formal, former drone pilots that have, are really struggling to come to terms with, uh, you know, killing through joysticks. Uh, and the, the thing that was surprising to me is that the intimacy that they really get to the people that they then are asked to kill. Um, having observed them for months, seeing them as fathers and family uh, people, and um, all of a sudden having to kill them, and then also having to watch the horror and the suffering they've caused on the, the ground afterwards, um, has had really devastating effects uh, on the people that we follow uh, in the film. So what do you think the future of drone warfare holds? Well, that's, that's a good question and, uh, and a frightening one uh, to me. I, I really believe that what we are seeing today, uh, both in the weapons that are used and also the example that the U.S. is setting in its use of drones is just the beginning. Uh, this technology is spreading incredibly fast and all the institutions are dealing with human rights and the legality around this warfare is moving very, very slowly. So uh, I think the future is, uh, is uh, quite frightening. Well, unfortunately, I agree with you there. Uh, for more on the film and where you can see Drone, you can check out the links in our resource well below. And thank you for joining us today.